Warning. This episode contains strong language, graphic depictions of violence and death that may be disturbing for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. true crime freaks and geeks this is shelly my name is brandon i'm sam i'm brayden oh and you're listening to (laughs) a beer a crime a tale (laughs) (laughs) shelly day late a dollar short it it was brandon's awful white boy dancing that ruined it all for me (laughs) no it was amazing it was was no white boy dancing is amazing sorry Mm -hmm. sorry have you seen Step Up? <laughs> no, I haven't. Actually. Have you seen Step Up? Okay. No. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, I actually haven't, is... but I did watch the Chip and Dale's version of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Magic. Yeah. 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 Number three coming at you. <laughs> Well, Brayden, thanks for joining us once again on another episode. Thanks for having me. Yeah. First episode was pretty good. If you guys haven't checked that out, go back and check out our first YouTube episode. Watch it on YouTube or listen to any podcast platform that you have. Spotify. <laughs> so the only one you can the, think the, of? Yeah, Spotify. iHeart Radio. We're on, we're on Amazon. Radio. We're on uh, Google. We're on, I don't know. There's like... Yeah. 20 or 25 of them. The only one we're not on is the one you have to be uber popular for. So Sirius XM? No, I think we're on Sirius. It's a... Oh my gosh. I don't even bother looking for it because I know we're not on it. I think it starts with a P. What is that one? Pandora? Pandora? Yeah, Pandora. Pandora? Yeah. Pandora, P- Pandora. 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 I think, I think you have to be like in the top like 10% of podcasts. We'll get there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're already probably in the top like 20. No, like 40. Well, that's definitely possible. fifty. We're, I know we're in the de- but, top fifty, but that's it. Like, yeah. So, at yeah. least, <laughs> at least that's good. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Out of like the six million podcasts, we're in the top three million. <laughs> Yay! Wow. <That's> so amazing. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> Hey, that's honestly, I'll take that. I will too. I'll take I'm fine that, with that any day. <laughs> I didn't even think we'd make it to the first top five million, so we're yay! <laughs> <laughs> yay! <laughs> we're gonna keep uh, continuing my weird noises. For <laughs> we're fine. Continuing on from the first episode, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. Today, we are going to be talking about Carrie Stainer. Today. So, <laughs> I really oh like oh. never heard of this guy. And when you say his name, all I'm picturing is paint because he's staining paint. Stainer. He's a stainer. He's a, he's a stainer. Or he's doing things causing stains. Like, I don't know. Maybe uh, it involves tube socks. We're not going there. Oh, 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 Shelly. <laughs> Get out. Leave. Leave. Am I right? The door. If there's any tube so- socks in the story, I will leave. But anyways, this, uh, this story is going to be weird. Um, tube sock weird? Mm, worse. Oh. Worse. oh. Uh, so, trigger warnings, there's going to be murder. Uh, wow. Um, there's going to be talk about rape, um, underage... Um, Kidnapping, blah, 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 blah. Underage kidnapping? Yeah. What's what's legal age for kidnapping? Yeah. No, I, I meant like underage rape. <laughs> that, that's what I what? meant. That's what I meant. Just a lot of underage yes. shit is going down. Yes, Got it. it's going down. All right. It's going down. It's going down. It's going down. Going down. <laughs> no, 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 no. Anyways, we're going to get to the the start of his life and kind of how he got where he is now. Um, So, Carrie was born. Carrie is a guy, by the way. I have a cousin named Carrie, so yeah. His life starts off unfortunate. I think it's an Irish... Carrie is like an Irish male name, actually. Hey, Carrie. Hey, Carrie. So, Carrie was born on August 13th, 1961 in Merced, California. 
to his parents, Kay and Delbert Stainer. I love that name. Delbert? Yeah. I, I kind of do like it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's grown on me. Delbert. Yeah. For the past two seconds, yeah. I, like it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the past two seconds, yeah. <laughs> but his father, Delbert, was a Korean War veteran who was very, very strict. And he met Kay, and they went on to having five children, three girls, two boys. Mm. And they were a very close but a dysfunctional family. Um, abuse ran in the family. Carrie or Kay Stainer, the, the mother, mm -hmm. was abused her whole childhood as well. Um, and at the age of three, Carrie showed signs of issues dealing with anxiety. Um, he suffered from, I'm going to kill it, um, trichotillomania. Trico is that, the, is that the, the bedwetting? <laughs> Trichotillo tit. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is this is where um, kids cope with stress and anxiety by pulling their hair and pulling yeah. stuff oh, out. Oh, I have heard of that. Yes. Okay. That. Yeah. Pretty sure that's that been would... joked about on like all the cartoon shows. Oh, like, that's I true. I can't control this, but I can control this. And like, rip yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There have actually been cases. It's like so crazy. They pull out their eyelashes. You know yes. how much yes. those hurt and their that nose hairs. Hurt. How oh much those goodness. hurt and they still do it. Yeah, oh. that's nuts. And Carrie had some very, very, very unusual fantasies at the age of seven. Oh, oh. Um, he claimed to have visions of capturing and killing women. What? At the age of seven. At the age of seven. Yes. And I had. Dreams of capturing like Winnie the Pooh and eating honey. I sure the <laughs> fuck didn't. Come here, want honey poo. <laughs> I sure the fuck didn't want to do that. <laughs> um, Don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a point where you know he explained that his family was in the car at a supermarket parking lot. And he fantasized about tying up and killing the female checkers at the market. The fuck? At seven. At seven. Okay. Um, now, whether this is true or not, I don't 100% know because he does tend to fabricate some stuff. But okay. I can believe, you know, with all of his mental illnesses. I you don't know, even. I, he's I never thought I'd be afraid of a seven year old, but I would be yeah. afraid of that seven year old. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Carrie shared the same room as his younger brother, Stephen, um, who was seven years old at the time, and Stephen was the golden child. He was his father's favorite. And when Carrie was 11, Stephen was seven, Stephen was kidnapped. His brother was abducted by Kenneth Parnell and his co-worker, Edward Erville Murphy, which Kenneth was a sex offender. Wait a minute, this is the second Erville in two stories. Nah. Yeah, remember Orville Crow, who found the my body in the last episode? Oh, you yeah. guys all couldn't Orville get Redenbacher. Yes. Yeah. I just couldn't get past the popcorn man. Well, <laughs> there's a double popcorn man. <laughs> but it's the same popcorn man. <laughs> the next episode that has Orville, I'm popping popcorn. <laughs> hey, I'm fine with that. We'll, we'll all pop popcorn and just eat during the episode. You'll just see the bag crinkle and that everything. That popcorn man is a monster. Yeah. Yeah. Kidnapped yeah. a kid, reported a body. He probably killed her. <laughs> Ooh, good theory. <laughs> but after this kidnapping, his father would yell at him and blame Carrie for his brother going missing, saying how he should have kept a better eye on him and how he can't believe that he was the one that went missing because he was the only son he actually liked. Damn. So he was, Damn. you know. Is it because they gave him a lady name? Carrie. <laughs> they wanted another female. They just wanted one son. I so said they wanted him to be a daughter, and they're like, oh, he's the, the, see, he, your brother's the only son I ever had, because I think of you as a daughter, because your name's Carrie. Yeah. Well, this enraged and fueled Carrie. And, I mean, it, you look back, he's seven years old, previous to this, he's seven years old thinking about murdering people, and then this happens, and then he's getting blamed for it. Yeah, four at the years age of later, eleven, and he's like he's gonna kill his yeah. whole family. But Kenneth, the kidnapper, brainwashed Stephen and kept him in cabins in the uh, Kathy's Valley, which was only a hundred feet away from his grandmother's property. Where the hell so, is the Kathy's Valley? In California. Oh. Anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> like Northern California, Southern yes, California. Yes. There. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is it both? 
it just <laughs> expands the, the entire somewhere. state of California. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but he brainwashed him and made him believe that his parents couldn't take care of him, so they sent him to live with Kenneth. And for the oh. next seven years, Carrie's brother, Stephen, lived with Kenneth and was repeatedly sexually abused. Damn. Because all of this was going on, uh, the parents of Stephen became deeply depressed and were grieving. Carrie would start to get verbally abused by his father. Like stated before, you know, he was yelling at him telling him basically it's all of his fault and in february of 1980 kenneth the the kidnapper decided to kidnap another boy five-year-old timothy white from ukai steven knew what the kid had in store for him is steven like 14 at this point then uh I, math and shit yeah it's seven and you say you spent seven years with him yeah so yeah okay. so seven he's, plus he's 14, seven though. is 14 we're doing good yash <laughs> and Carrie is 18. Yes. Okay. And Stephen knew what the kid had in store for him. And he feared this and he didn't want the kid to suffer the same fate as him. So Stephen eventually escaped with Timothy and saved him from the monstrosity. And Stephen went to the police station, informed the police of what was going on at, at the cabins. Wow. Yeah. So in a weird way, over the last seven years, he technically could have escaped. The whole time. He, yeah, but he was brainwashed, and I think something clicked in him when he saw the next kid. It was like, something's going on weird here. Uh, and he probably was like, this doesn't seem right. I'm not sure. I I, mean, that's my that, guess. That makes sense. Because, that's my guess. You know, I, I get it, because when you're a little kid at seven, who's really going to want to run away? Yeah. And after seven years, Stephen finally re reunited with his family. And his parents were ecstatic to have their son back. Reunited and it feels so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stephen got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> got a little carried away. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen got a lot of publicity from this and became national news. Later, there was a movie made from the incidents that occurred called I Know My First Name is Stephen. And wait, wait a minute. Did they change his name? Why would he suddenly know his first name Stephen? No, so basically what happened is when he went to the police station, he didn't know what to tell them, and the only thing he, the first thing he told them was, I know my first name is Steven. Like, that's Got pretty it. much okay. all like, he knows. That's all he knew was, He knows something's Hi, happening, but that's, that's what he knows. Yeah. Um, so then they made a movie off of that. Okay. Um, Carrie became very angry and jealous that his brother was getting so much attention from this incident. Are you serious? And what? Carrie knew that there was only one son in the house, and that son was Stephen. He felt like he was pushed aside and abandoned by his parents. Wait a minute. Isn't he, like, 18 at this point? can he just, like, move out of the house and start his own life? Probably. But that'd be the too easy way. That's too easy. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. That's too easy. On September 17th, 1989, nine years later, Stephen dies from a motorcycle accident. Are you fucking kidding? Damn. Because of his death, it sent Carrie into his dark spiraling rage, into his, like, real personality. So he became who he is. Damn. Okay, so he lived nine more years. Carrie was able to subdue his I want to kill cashiers until the motorcycle accident. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Seems kind of silly. Yeah. Just saying. But during these years, Carrie was living with his uncle Jesse and held a job working at a mirror making company. Because of the death of Stephen, it triggered Carrie into a world of violence. In 1990, his uncle Jesse was found dead inside the house. Hmm. Yeah. Very hmm. strange. Carrie claimed that Jesse was very sexually abusive. And investigators think that Carrie did something or had something to do with the death of Jesse, but no one was charged at the time. So who was Jesse sexually abusive to? Like people? Like Carrie. Carrie was stating that Jesse was sexually abusing him. This was in nineteen ninety? Correct. So this guy is like in his twenties or thirties or whatever? Because he was born in sixty seven? Sounds about right. Maybe twenty three? Yeah, 23. Yeah, 23. Yeah. Hmm. Why doesn't he punch him? 
I wonder if he's got like the mind of a child. I mean, it's I mean Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, it's I possible. guess. I mean, all that's true, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's not in his right mind with everything happening. Okay. Um, but it was believed that there was a person that was roaming the property of Jesse's oh. and went on to murdering him. But the drifter was never identified. Carrie was actually questions about questioned about it, but it was never tried in court for it. And Carrie later denied having any involvement with the murder. So in 1991, Carrie was still working at the mirror factory and was described to be kind, caring, approachable by his coworkers. He did a Care, total. Caring. Yeah. Caring. Caring, caring Carrie. <laughs> and uh, that, that's crazy to me how like he could hide his emotions from the inside to the outside. Um, so I can't ever remember which one's which, but isn't that one of the like signs of like a... a sociopath or yeah it's a, yeah it's a sociopath. i mean that, that would add up yeah sociopaths like they mask by mimicking the emotions and the actions of them around yeah. them yeah. yeah and it sounds like he's kind of self-aware of how he is and that's usually the more dangerous sociopath because yeah. they know that they don't feel like other people do Got so they, they they use it they know they have to cover that and they can't show that they yeah. don't care and later on that year one of his co-workers saw Carrie punching wood in the shop. The co-worker walked up to him and was like, dude, what are you doing? And Carrie mentioned that he was so angry at the world and how he wanted to kill all of his co-workers. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> yeah, I no quit. Yeah, shit. We know that nowadays. <laughs> like... Yeah, I quit. But he went on and was seen by a, th- a psychiatrist. Oh, good. But they, got they decided call. that it was... It was normal for his behavior due to his past, <laughs> and there was no further treatment. Oh, <laughs> wait a no. minute! Yeah. Fucking, they no. dropped the ball yeah. on they, that one. They, yeah, they cut him off. Yeah, I would quit too. Yeah, I would just. <laughs> <laughs> but his his parents soon I'm after in left. Danger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> I mean, he's in a, he's making mirrors. It it doesn't take much to break a mirror and start slicing people. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> no kidding. Put it in a shredder, just aim it at people. Yes. <laughs> Punching wood is like, I want to kill all my co workers. Like, yeah, I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> I'm not safe here. Hey, I'm yeah. too weak notice. It's like, he's going to slit my throat. <laughs> this is not worth my internship. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> this internship is not for me. I'll work somewhere else, maybe across the country. But his, his parents soon after left the city and he was fired from his mirror making job, which that's I mean, probably for the yeah. best. Yeah. 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 Don't let the crazy person work with sharp objects. <laughs> but everybody left him. And now he's alone. He's isolated. And later on that same year, Kerry reported to have failed um to have had a failed suicide attempt. Aww. And was later picked up in nineteen ninety seven, so six years later, for possession of marijuana and methamphetamines. But these charges were dropped. He's just still having it rough, huh? Yeah. yeah, and he just he just wanted to be so isolated that he moved out into the middle of nowhere and Unabomber. lived off the grid. Uner, Una, Uner Bobber, Uner Bobber, Uner Bobber, Uner Bobber. Do you think he moved in next door to Ted? Uni- yes, Unabomber. <laughs> the Unabomber's name was Ted. Okay. Whoa, Shelly. I can't pronounce it. It's Polish or something. Ted Skazinski or something like that. Okay. I was like, you almost have said the bad word. I know. (laughs) You almost said the gamer word. (laughs) What? Wait a minute. Now I'm curious. She's too old. Never mind. Oh, my God. So. (laughs) Now, hang on. I'm going to go Google right now. You you do your story. I'm going to Google the gamer word. No, you shouldn't. I'm going to. Fuck off. But anyways, he was hired at a local lodge (laughs) as the handyman and lived up in the room upstairs from the diner. Everybody loved him. Of course they did. And he was well known in the town. And just like before, he gave off a friendly appearance, but deep down he had feelings. Feelings of suffering and revenge. He was able to shush these feelings by hiking in the woods and found his love for nude sunbathing. Okay. I mean, that's not the worst thing in the world. I was going to say, that's way less destructive. There's a lot worse. It's like, at least it's not... I'd rather have someone 
sunbathe naked in the woods than killing people. Yeah, than I mean, killing all the people. Oh, I was going to say, it's like, it's just I mean, go get naked get so in the woods. <laughs> just go get naked Be in naked the woods. Be naked all you want. Don't kill don't your care. coworkers. <laughs> but I wonder if he made himself like a little leaf lake. Like a little Tarzan <laughs> typey <laughs> thing. <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the whole like Adam and Eve in the yes. garden thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking up gamer words and this one's cracking me up. Gamer <laughs> words. Meat shield. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm good. Go on, nerf. <laughs> I'm ready. Carrie would sunbathe <laughs> naked, and he would smoke marijuana on a regular basis. I think this is a lifestyle that I'm okay with. <laughs> like he was amazed at the concept of Bigfoot, and I'm sure. <laughs> oh, here we go. I'm sure smoking all that weed in the forest. <laughs> yeah, out in the forest, naked, and think about Bigfoot was like super crazy experiences. Like, God, so fucking high. So I wonder if Bigfoot's around here. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you think he wanted to hunt him down, or hunt him down for other reasons? <laughs> I mean, he wanted he was he was obsessed with Bigfoot and wanted to to find him. Got it. And in 1998, Carrie could not hold back his feelings. He became to unravel, and what comes next is pretty brutal. Ooh. So on February 14th, which is Valentine's Day, Carrie <laughs> sees <laughs> what? Yeah, I like that you had to identify it. February 14th, which for everybody who doesn't know, that's Valentine's well, Day. Well, if somebody said February 14th, I wouldn't think that's Valentine's Day. I would. I would. I, I, I would I'm in too. the same boat as him. I wouldn't. It slipped my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's for all the guys out there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, okay. Just your girl sound nice. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. But <laughs> that's it's April. <laughs> give a calendar out. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. We're I missed you. <laughs> I missed by like two months. Yeah, two months. Yeah. <laughs> Just surprise your girlfriend by showing up and be like, "Happy Valentine's Day!" In the of April. <laughs> and see how it goes. These, these are Easter Day. eggs, but you know it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> She'd kill me. She <laughs> have me. little heart-shaped Reese's on the inside. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> She'd be Every, so pissed. Everything's shaped like bunnies and eggs, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> Carrie sees a mother, Carol, her teenager daughter, teenage daughter, Julie, <laughs> and the daughter's <clears throat> friend, Silvana. Take a drink, bitch. God damn it. <laughs> He saw all three of them pull into the parking lot of the lodge. Carrie had watched them all day and noticed that there were only people. They were the only people staying at the lodge, and he had visions all day of capturing and torturing uh, the two young girls. Jeez! When the family gets to the room, they hear a knock at the door. Mind you, it's like 11 p.m., and Carrie is standing on the outside, just knocking on the door. And when Carol, the mother, opens up the door. He tells her he needs to check the bathroom because there's a leak. <laughs> what? I, I mean, he's the handyman. Like, he works there. That's what he does. I'm sorry. If a handyman showed up at my door at 11 p.m., right. I'd be like, can you fuck off? <laughs> right. She, she, was like, she was like, she was like very like, weary about it. Check it tomorrow. Fuck. Like, go away. Still going to be broken. <laughs> yeah. Still going to be broken. <laughs> we won't use it tonight. Go away. <laughs> but she was weary about letting him in, obviously. Um, and she closes the door, tells him to hold on for a moment. She's going to go check the bathroom. Um, she checks the bathroom. I hope she locked her door, like, when she shut it. There's no leak. She walks back and tells Carrie that there's no leak. And Carrie was persistent with his demands to come in, no. to check out, and look at the bathroom. No. Carol, unfortunately, opens up the door for him. What the fuck? No, Carol, don't do it. As soon as he is... In- as soon as he's in the room, he Carol, pulls out a no, gun and points bitch. it at Carol. He takes Damn the two it, young Carol. girls and puts them in the bathroom and locks the door. Oh, shit. He goes back to the living room where he strangles Carol and kills her. Um, oh, he, he carries the body of Carol and puts it in the trunk of the car that they showed up in um, and heads back to the room. He unlocks the bathroom door and sexually assaults Sil- Silvana and Julie. Now, how old are the girls again? Uh, they're 14, Animal. 15. So they're in a bathroom though, right? Yeah, they're locked in a bathroom. Why didn't they get their razors out? I don't know. I'm just thinking ahead. I mean, 
This is the nineties. They probably freaked out. They just heard they just heard their mother in the next room get what, strangled to death. What damage would their razors do? I would be cutting that to bitch. a gun. I, he's, don't bring a knife to a gunfight. <laughs> don't bring a razor oh, to a gunfight. <laughs> that's yes. not hardly a knife. It's like so. There's two girl, two of them against one. Who at some point when he's raping somebody, he's not going to be holding the gun to pay attention. I would be cutting that bitch. I'm just saying. You what, only get two seconds. Though. The razor back yes. and forth and just giving him like little superficial yes. like paper cut. No, cuts. I have a massive scar on my leg from oh, a God. razor. <laughs> Jesus Christ! But are you dead though? <laughs> I came close. <laughs> I almost bled to death on my stairs. It was dramatic. My mom wouldn't hang up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, he unlocks the door and sexually assaults Silvana and Julie. He then murders Silvana because she was screaming and not cooperating with him. Carrie picks up Silvana's body and places it in the trunk with Carol's body. Did he shoot her or strangle her? He shot her. Did he really? Okay, now he's actually using the gun. Got it. No, no, he he probably. Sorry, I, I was thinking of something else. Um, I'm assuming he strangled her because okay. it was probably just quieter that way. Yeah, it's he like probably would have woke a, up a hotel, everybody in the shot. Yeah. People would have heard the gunshot. Yeah, got it. It okay. didn't. It didn't state that, so I I kind of looked over that. I'm sorry. She the other girl could have left by now. Yeah. I'm, I'm Unless not. he locked the door. I'm sure he's got keys. Unless he's he beat senseless. I, I, it's just a hotel room. I I don't know. I'm sorry. I I think I could figure out a way to escape. Yeah, well, there's a lot of trauma going on right now. So. And they're young they're kids. 14. They're probably not thinking about how to escape. They're probably they don't thinking have like, an oh, God, I don't want to die. Like you. <laughs> well, <laughs> <You> dick. <laughs> <laughs> I think that... Even at 14, I would have done that. But then again, I grew up in a house that I, I grew up with FBI agents and d d police detectives and shit. So that probably explains they that. They showed up to their house all the time. Um, so <laughs> yes, that's exactly what happened. It, Trouble child. He, Trouble child. No, <laughs> no my I relatives, know. I know. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> he went back to the room and spent hours sexually abusing and torturing Julie. Jeez. In his sick, twisted mind of Carrie... He starts to believe that he's getting attached to this 15-year-old. Oh, he starts oh, to believe uh, that he's he's caught uh, feelings for her. In the 15 minutes they were in the bathroom together? Yes. That he's been okay. sexually assaulting her? And he's like, this is what love is. I mean, it's no. been hours. So this is love. Ooh. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. God, Was that Bambi? Was, you're never no. coming back. <laughs> Cinderella. <laughs> oh, Cinderella. Okay. <laughs> oh. Or was Eddie it Snow White? Was, I can't remember. That was so bad. <laughs> okay. Bad timing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Disney's never sponsored yet. No. Uh, but... I don't think they were going to. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie waited until oh, the morning to put Julie in the car <clears throat> and drove her along with the dead bodies in the trunk to Lake Don Pedro Reservoir. Lake Don Pedro was a very remote place that is 90 miles away from Yosemite National Park where the lodge was kind of located around. Um, once they get to a scenery spot on the hill, he opens the door, picks her up, swoops her up, kind of like uh, a groom does to a bride, and he sits her on a rock near the lake. Is this where he proposes and they get married? Not exactly. I want the foreshadowing crown. You won't get it. Carrie turns oh. to her and slits her throat as she's oh, sitting on the rock. <laughs> okay, Shelly. I definitely didn't get that. Tonight. You can't laugh. At, that's not funny. Because I, I fucked up. I fucked up the foreshadowing. That's what I'm laughing at. It's not funny. You're right. But I definitely didn't foreshadow that correctly. I didn't see that coming at all. No, the you way, didn't. That's why I was like, way, just shut up. The way you said that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> following her thing she's like I just want like those. I thought like she's literally like, you were you going to not get it she slit her throat <laughs> <laughs> fuck god now damn you know why I laugh. stop laughing <laughs> because here's the thing it's like, not funny it's I'm not, laughing because I'm uncomfortable yeah we're not laughing I'm at laughing because yeah. yeah. it's uncomfortable the way the it was way delivered you, like, yeah because it was implied that okay so she's not getting proposed to because this delusional idiot 
Like I thought maybe like anything he was take but pictures murdered. Or yes. Something like yeah. Honestly, close when, for me. when I was reading upon this, um, I thought it was going to go on and be like you know they sat by the riverbed and like just kind of shared stories throughout the day. Yeah, it's like you did the the whole but bridal it, yeah. carry. Literally, yeah. like how I delivered it, it was delivered to me, and I was like, oh shit. Is it because like he did the bridal carry? He set her down. He, right. he was falling in he love with feelings, her. Yeah, and then and he sets her down. Like, it's like and <laughs> she's like, oh, this is where he's gonna propose, and he's like, yes, it's gonna be a happy she, ending. He's or, like, you it, won't get it because he slit her throat. <laughs> I stop. Funny, but you're God right. Damn. Every time you say it like that, it's the delivery. It's the delivery. It's so out of it's, left field. It's the singing, right, and then, gonna, the, then he slit her throat. We're gonna go ahead. <laughs> go forward. Oh God. He, I know. I'm gonna get all kinds of hate comments. That is, fucking bitch. She laughed. It was the delivery, and it was uncomfortable and out of left field. I know. Okay. I was out of pocket, Brandon. <laughs> I apologize. Yes. <laughs> um. He left her there to die. He dumped the rest of the bodies. But she's not dead yet. He just left her there. Well, he somebody slit her throat. throat so right. She's, but people survive that shit. He didn't <laughs> dump the bodies. Okay. okay I, I well. lied. <laughs> he, he left her, her there to die. Okay. Drove a little bit further down the road along with the car that he took that was theirs. And he left it. Started walking a little bit. Called for a cab. And that's when the cab took him all the way back, 90 miles, back to the lodge. Now, on the way back to the lodge, he asks the female driver if she believes in Bigfoot. Oh, God. She okay. replies with a big fat no. And this pisses him off, and he tells her that she should believe in him. What the fuck? Because <laughs> I am him. <laughs> yeah, basically, that's kind of how this whole story is, is going. Like, he believes that he's kind of that Bigfoot... He's isolated. He's got the power. And is he Harry? I don't he's Carrie. know. He's Harry. He's Harry Carrie. Scary Carrie. <laughs> he's like, I just give up at this point. I'm done. <laughs> but luckily, the female cab driver was able to drop him off at the, lo- at the lodge unharmed. And he went back to the motel like nothing ever happened and goes back to work. He goes through Carol's room and starts to clean it up because that's exactly what he does. You know, that's his job. He's a handyman. Two days went by. Nobody raised an eyebrow. Now, Carol had a husband who tried to get in contact with her, but thinks that she is just making her way to the San Francisco airport. So he's not like 100% freaking out. Oh, my husband would be completely oh, I, insane. Yeah. yeah. Like, if he couldn't talk to me, like, once a day, he would probably have already flown to California and, like, ripped the whole state apart. Yeah. So. And at this point, Carrie is starting to freak out a little bit. And he's paranoid about not covering up his tracks enough. So he goes back to the car he abandoned with Carol and Silvana's uh, bodies in the trunk. He brought with him some gasoline and started to scavenge through the car and removed all of the evidence that belonged to him. Um... And, and all the evidence from the body. He sets the car on fire and then he flees. Now he removes Carol's wallet and drives to Modesto, California, where he throws it. He he tries he throws it on the ground and tries to throw off the FBI. Doesn't that won't he have fingerprints on it? They they probably didn't check it. Oh, all right. You know how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the way she goes. Simplest thing. And it took four days after they disappeared to be reported as missing. And the wallet of Carol was found. A nearby person that was out for a stroll found the wallet and brought it straight to the police. And the police changed the case from a missing person's case to a criminal case. Based off the wallet? Yeah, because... Was there, like, blood or something on it? No, I mean, it was just left on the ground. Like, it's it's no longer a missing person missing persons like it is now like a kidnap and they I mean, thought some I guess, rough play was going on i can, I can see I, where that comes into play now what i'm just playing the devil's advocate like if i was a cop or something what well, if you're not i'm not <laughs> but but let's say like carol in theory could have just like dumped all of her shit stole her girls and left because her husband was a psychopath i'm just saying in modesto california i don't know where Fuck, they're I don't know. not they're, they're traveling 
there's no sign of their vehicle until just kidding um <laughs> stop doing that <laughs> but investigators started to search for her car and and started to question everybody that worked at the lodge even Carrie was questioned by FBI, but they reported him as super calm and cooperative. But Carrie didn't feel like he was calm and started to freak out, wondering if the FBI was going to show up at the FBI. door. FBI! FBI! <laughs> FBI was going to come back later that day and arrest him. One month goes on. After the disappearance, a local hunter was walking the wooded areas and stumbled across the vehicle that Carrie had left. He noticed the two bodies in the trunk, and investi investigators could not ID the bodies because of the fire, but were able to ID them using DNA. Could they not ID the one with their throat slit? However, Julie's body was not found. Huh. Because he drove away from the location that he, he killed Julie at. So Julie is actually dead. You weren't fucking with me. No, Julie is dead. Oh my god. I actually kind of held out hope that she kind of survived that. No. I, I I didn't. I, I, I Most people don't survive slashing. their but throat But people being do slit. survive it. If they get medical they treatment immediately. I am going to find a case for my next episode. Where I can't remember who it was, but she literally got sliced like from one ear to another and yeah, she survived. You, you can survive it, but you have to get to a hospital fast. Yeah. Not in the middle of a woods sitting on a rock by a river. That, an area that's very, very remote. It's like she was not going to get medical treatment for a long time and while she's just bleeding out from massive arteries. Yeah, and unless you're your dad's Poseidon, you're not going to heal from that. Yeah. Stop it. Honestly. Jeez. Stop. And even if you found medical help, odds are you're going to die out there. Yeah. I mean, you, you've got so negative. You, well, think about it. You've got bugs, parasites. Yeah. Predators. Maybe she comes across a medicine man. A shaman? <laughs> A yes. shaman? Just a shaman in the woods. He, he just Follow the river downstream. <laughs> just swings, crow flies. swings his <laughs> rain cane and <laughs> peels her throat. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, um, Carrie felt pretty confident and, and felt close to the investigation. He would help investigators and show them around the lodge and gain their trust. No. He even wrote a letter to them, being like anonymous. And stated where they can find the body of Julie and even draws a map of her location and tells them that we had a lot of fun together. Oh. Oh. Common tactic. What an Injecting asshole. yourself in the investigation. Yeah. Just like Sunder. Investigators yeah. drive up to the area and found the body of Julie. At this point, the body was decomposing and she was almost decapitated. Jeez. Police felt like they. I guess there's no coming back from that. Yeah. yeah. If your head's almost. If you off, had said in the beginning no. that he almost decapitated her, I probably, first of all, would have believed you a lot faster. I got a lot of curveballs in this episode. It's all about the delivery. <laughs> what you mean? When Anyways, you're not gonna uh, get so. It. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Police felt like they already had the perpetrator in custody. And was just wanting to get more evidence on them to convict them. But three months goes by and Carrie felt a little too confident and strikes again. July 21st, 1999, 26-year-old Joy Ruth Armstrong. Joy. What? Her name was Joy? Joy, yeah. Joy. Joy Youth Ruth Armstrong. How is that name spelled? I don't know. <laughs> That's not in front of him. <laughs> no, I was listening to a podcast called True Crime, which kudos to them for some of my my information, but I couldn't, I didn't look at her spelling. No, so it could be just Joy. No, it's Joy. -y. Anyways, okay. She <laughs> she it's was J O Y E. Yeah, Joy E E J O Y E E hmm. is how I'm assuming. Um, but she was one of the park workers. And she became a victim to Carrie Stainer. 30 minutes away from the lodge, Joy was loading up her car. I still think her name's got to be Joy. No, it's not. Okay. Joy was loading up her car outside of the cabin where she was staying when Carrie walked up to her and started talking to her. He later says that 
he knew the area because that's where he would always see Bigfoot at. <laughs> do, you think, do you think Bigfoot's telling him to do these murders? Probably. It's, it's something in the back of his head. It's kind of what I'm thinking. <laughs> but Carrie then had her at gunpoint, forced her inside of the cabin. He tied her up and put duct tape around her mouth so she couldn't scream. Carrie then placed Joy Yi into his car and took off. Joy was able to escape the car and starts to run down the road for her life. But because she was tied up, she was not able to go that far, and Carrie got out and tackled her to the ground. This pissed Carrie off to the point where he actually ends up decapitating her. <gasps> Carrie leaves oh her body. God. A park ranger eventually finds the body, and all the suspects that the police thought they had involving the three murders, three other murders, we're now no longer suspects because he's still out there killing. Carrie's favorite thing to do was sunbathe naked. <laughs> Jeez. And after he had kill, I didn't killed her. I didn't expect him to still be running around the woods naked for some Well, reason. after he killed her, he parked his car and did just that. And while he was sunbathing, two park rangers walk up to Carrie and confiscate his backpack that he had. After because this, he was naked? Yeah, I mean, they probably looked at his backpack, saw some weird stuff and took it. Uh, but they didn't have enough to arrest him. So, can park rangers arrest people? Yeah. Really? I thought they could yeah. just like do tickets. I just didn't think they could actually arrest Well, maybe that's them. just think, what they did. I'm not I sure. I think they can like detain and then have yeah, police they, come but and take you to with a cause. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Take them to a police station to be like formally arrested, but do they have weapons? Yeah. I mean, I know they have stuff yeah. to like sh- like, you know, tranquilize a bear, but I don't know yeah. Now I'm but, curious. But anyways, <laughs> anyways, they let him go, and he headed back to the lodge, where he was interviewed again. And the rema- the rangers remembered a blue and white vehicle parked not too far from the scene of the crime. And they later tracked down this vehicle and found 37-year-old Carrie Stainer with that vehicle. They took pictures of his tires and his vehicle, but never arrested him. They took the evidence and left. This freaked him out, and he ended up fleeing. And when investigators realized that the tires matched the markings around the scene, they went back to arrest him, but he was he was gone. On July 24th, 1999, FBI finally had arrested Carrie Stainer for the four murders. A random person saw the wanted persons report and recognized Carrie as the culprit. He was found at a nudist camp in the Sacramento area. Of course he was. <laughs> FBI walked into the diner and just arrested him. A local news reporter. Go ahead. He Was he clothed at the diner? Do they arrest him naked? I'm assuming no, because it's a camp. I just am excited that he was arrested naked. Go ahead. <laughs> From start to finish, he was naked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But a local news reporter got word of the arrest and went straight to the prison in hopes to get an interview with Carrie. And he kept asking and asking and asking, and they would always say no. And Carrie would say, no, I don't want an interview. And he kept asking and asking and asking. And he finally got a 30-minute interview with Carrie Stainer. And strangely enough, he ended up confessing to the news crew before he even confessed to the investigators. Wow, he really wanted some publicity, didn't he? Yeah, and as the news reporters sat in the room that was, you know, separated by glass and the the phone line going back and forth, Carrie picked up the phone, told the entire story to the news reporter. The very first thing he said was, I want you to contact the Hollywood producers and I want you to make a movie of the week made about my story. Like the Lifetime movie of the week. Yeah, like he wanted a movie made about his story. That would be the last fucking thing I would ever do. Well, I mean, you you remember back to where his brother was, had a movie made about him Mm -hmm. and and his tragedy and whatnot. And I, I feel like he wants the limelight now. He wants to be in a movie now. He wants to be like his brother. Yeah. Okay. Um, but he he went on to fully confessing about the four murders, and he, he was proud of it. But he did not he did not want to admit to the sexual contact with the women 
or the tortures. Did they make a movie? Please tell me they didn't. Um, to my knowledge, no, they did not. Good, good, good. He doesn't deserve one. Curveball. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, the crap you pulled on me earlier was a curveball. Clerf. 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 That's how Clerf. upsetting it was. Mm, cheers. Mm. Just Clerf. Mm. I still feel bad Clerf. about laughing because I wasn't even laughing at her poor murder. I was laughing at your dumbass. Anyways. <laughs> God. Carrie was tried and convicted of four counts of murder. Good. And along with other felonies. He was sentenced to death on December 12th, 2002, and is still awaiting the death penalty in a prison in California. They're taking their sweet ass time, aren't they? I think they always do with most death sentences. Hmm. Mm, yeah. Okay. All right. Does he see Bigfoot in jail? Yes. I, I hope so. Does he. He get shakes to... his hand and everything. Be a nudist in jail? Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, technically, if you wanted to. Also, that's kind of dangerous to do in prison. It's really easy to get sodomized if you don't have clothes on. I bet there's somebody that looks like fucking Bigfoot who's probably fucking him in the bathroom. It's fine. Uh, don't drop the soap. Don't drop the soap. Uh, he's like, huh, oops. <laughs> 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 All right. Now on to my... No. First, I have to talk about park rangers. <laughs> They are peace officers, which means they are are or are. They are authorized, <laughs> authorized, authorized, authorized to carry a weapon and make arrests. So yes, yeah. Braden was correct. Although I think I think park rangers like in their like little ranger station, they have like one cell, like it's a singular. Yeah, it's a sat phone. Oh. So. <laughs> Well, so like it's not like they have a jail where they can arrest you. They, no. they just detain you in yeah. a singular cell, and they have one person detained in there, and then they have to have like. Do you think when they tranquilize a bear, they put the bear in the cell too? I hope so. <laughs> I kind of do too. <laughs> Go get detained by a park ranger and see if there are bear claw marks in the cell. No, because I'll probably end up fucking with the bear. No, I'll pass. Ew. Yeah. You, push, you shouldn't fuck bears, Shelly. <laughs> I want to say it looks like Bigfoot. Okay, oh so moving on to my fake crime or doing time. No, no, wrong. No. Real time or doing crime. No. Fake crime fake. or no. doing time. No. Real time or doing crime. Yep. Real time no. or doing is it crime. Real crime or doing time. Real time crime crime. I can't <laughs> <laughs> sure. Anyways. Sure, we're that going with that like one. all the things I say. <laughs> time well, crime crime. <laughs> this right. is where I'm going to give you two scenarios. One's going to be fake. One's going to be real. You have to decide which one is real and which one is fake. Scenario number one. Wow. 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 Owen Gills Jr., a 24 Wait a minute, what was his first name? Owen Gills. <laughs> that's Owen that's Gills, like, okay. So did you just say Owen? We're really weird. <laughs> a 24 year old resident of Chesapeake, Virginia, was riding in a car in which police found drugs and two handguns. Gills was arrested and taken in for questioning. The detectives asked Gills multiple questions, and instead of replying verbally, he leant to his right and release loud farts. Okay. He continued to fart each time a question was asked until the detective ended the interview. Gills was not charged, but two months later, he was pulled over and arrested after police found crack cocaine and a stolen weapon in his car. You know, to fart on command, that's really impressive. What if he wasn't farting on command? What if he, like, shoved something up there and it was just a little too loose? You know what I mean? Like, drugs and shit? That's funny, because my next scenario... Oh, curveball. <laughs> curveball. <laughs> curveball. No, do not do the curveball. <laughs> curveball. <laughs> Police in Marion County, Florida, pulling over 26 year old Patreon Stokes for speeding. After they smell marijuana, they search his car, allegedly finding a bunch of drugs, specifically being meth, crack, and heroin, and money. They so took they a- smelled marijuana, but they found everything except yeah. marijuana. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Skip. They took him into custody, but when they arrived at the station, the money had vanished. Money started to fall out of his butt in oh. the form of $20 bills. According to the Marion County Sheriff's Office, deputies located $1,090 in U.S. currency hidden in Stokes' rectum. 
Stokes received one charge for his rectal magic trick and was also <laughs> charged with the drugs. How do you charge someone for a rectal magic trick? So <laughs> Try explaining that to the courts. Be like, listen, this guy had a, over $1,000 up his ass. It's got to be a crime, right? Yeah, it's, it's, was, was it only 20s? It was only 20s. That's a lot. Okay. It was in the form of twenty dollar bills. That's Damn, son. Okay. The man's committed. I'll give ass. him that. He's committed. I'll give him that. <laughs> were, were they in rolls stack. and he just that had is. like stacks yeah. of rolls? How'd they get it out? He had Laxatives. poop at some point. Laxatives, <laughs> mm. probably. I feel like that <laughs> wouldn't get everything out. Here's I feel the like thing: it would be when, up when you get detained, you, you, I believe you Cough stand. And swipe. No, yeah. no. Whoop. You stand with your toes facing in. So if you stand with your toes facing in, you cannot clench your cheeks. Without falling over. And yeah, and that's when deputies can go in and do their job. In other words, fish sweep. it out. Yeah. Why are both your hands on my shoulders? <laughs> I'm sorry. Why do I have to cough? <laughs> yeah. Why do I have to cough, sir? Wait a minute. <laughs> this is my chiropractor. <laughs> So how much okay, how much so, did he manage to hide up there? A thousand dollars, a thousand and ninety dollars. Jeez, all right. Okay, so we've got butt money man versus farter. Farter, yeah. Farter and butt money man. Farter and butt money man. Is there another one? I'm gonna go with farter because I don't think butt. Money I'm gonna man go is with possible. butt money. Wait a minute. So which one's fake? I'm picking which, which one's, one's real. Which one's real? The butt real money. one is farter. Yeah, I think that one too. Congratulations, Brayden. You mm. are the winner. No fucking way. Farter. That's not, it's not possible real. because the mathematically it makes no sense. You can't have one thousand ninety dollars and only twenties. Tell that to the internet. Okay, internet. <laughs> it was on Google. Mathematically, you cannot do. <laughs> yeah, there has to be at least a ten or there five. Has to be ten. Okay, ten I'm ones. sorry. I'm sure there's a ten in there somewhere. But it was in the form of 20. That is the reason why I picked Farter was because mathematically no, it was impossible. No, you, you suck. Biologically, you suck. that's impossible. <laughs> Biologically, I mean. Anything you can had, happen if you put your butt to it. If you had beer and beans, you maybe. But watch any porns <laughs> where some of these women put like fucking giant black like. Whoa. Dildos. What are you watching, Whoa. Shelley? No, seriously, watch some of this shit. No. I'm gonna pull it up sometime. For we you do to watch. not. We do not condone any. We of do this. not condone any of this. <laughs> this is how you get banned on YouTube. <laughs> I'm not gonna show Shut it up. to them, just to you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Cut it all yeah. out. You're gonna you cut could, the episode. You can show reactions to gross things. All I've right. seen reactions of people that are watching two girls, one cup. Exactly. <laughs> no. But they I probably don't put see some the shit video. Up. It's just them going, "Oh, oh, god." What am I doing wrong? <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing wrong? People put whole fists up people's asses. <clears throat> Somebody put a fucking gerbil up someone's ass. Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can um, easily stick a whole fistful of money up someone's yeah. ass. Yeah. yeah, it's not. but you can't have one thousand ninety dollars in twenties. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, math yeah. Lad, math lad. You can get to one thousand eighty in twenties, yes. but yes. that last ten can't be in twenties. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thank you guys for listening to this episode. Hopefully, we didn't scare you off too much. I'm sure uh, a lot. My drunken ass scared everybody, but that's fine. so we're good. <laughs> if we scared you off. We're probably not to your cup of beer. Huh? Uh, <laughs> Check out our Facebook. <laughs> Check out our Facebook at a beer crime tale at gmail.com. No, that's not it. Check out check out <laughs> our, Check out our Facebook at a beer a crime. My hair a tale. Is, this is what <laughs> Oh my god. I've had too much to drink. I'm fine. This is what uh, we record multiple episodes multiple at once. Multiple episodes and this I'm gonna like Brandon's trying to get people to our Facebook with our email. <laughs> Shelly's drunk ass over here. I'm fine. I'm overheating. I fucking hate you. <laughs> All right. What's going on? Oh, go Instagram. to our Instagram. Oh my God. <laughs> at a beer crime wow. tale. Uh, wow. Send us emails at what Brandon already told you, which is beer crime tale at gmail.com. <laughs> thank you, Brayden, for, for putting up here again. <laughs> I'm sure we'll see you in the near future. Oh, yeah. All right. Definitely. All right. And as we fade out and true. A beer Crime. crime Attack. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.